Sakura. Some people love her, most people hate her. But I think one thing we can all agree on is that she's probably the most hated character in Naruto, barring maybe one. But the real question should be, why? She's weak, her relationship with Sasuke, and her relationship with Naruto. And what I would like to say is, for the most part, I do agree with a lot of these criticisms. I do believe most of them are valid, but I do also think that a lot of them are heavily overblown. I hope this video will convince you of the same, or at least make it seem like that take is reasonable. So let's jump right into it. Is Sakura weak? Yeah. But, since when did being weak make you a bad character? There are plenty of great characters who aren't weak, and Sakura is one of them. There are plenty of situations where Sakura's weakness makes her useless in terms of a fighting situation, but not contributing physically in a fight doesn't make you a bad character. My first point here is, I think people make way too big a deal when this happens. You should look at Sakura for her whole character rather than just one aspect of it. And one way I think we can do this is, if we focus less on her lack of outward action and rather look inside towards her inner reaction. What Sakura doesn't contribute in terms of a fight, she makes up for with an interesting character conflict and an interesting character dialogue. Yes, Sakura is often seen sitting on the sidelines, but the inner dialogue that she has as a result of this, and the fallout that she has with herself for being weak, and having to live with the weakness and the self-hatred that comes with it, I think that's very interesting to watch. And what being weak allows for is space for Sakura to grow and for us as the audience in Kishimoto's and Mangaka to explore what does it mean to be weak and how does this affect someone. And I think we can see just that in her relationship with Sasuke and Naruto. Her relationship with Sasuke, it's a weird one. Sasuke is the object of Sakura's unrequited love and it's in this love that we see the worst aspects of her character and the worst aspects of her as a person. Her love for Sasuke, it's very poorly established and there's no denying that i'm not going to argue that she has some really deep or meaningful reason for liking him but i still think despite this her relationship with him is still pretty interesting the interest doesn't come from her obsession with him but instead it comes from her reaction to his lack of interest and how this plays a part into her overall feelings of weakness and uselessness and like you could look at it and laugh or i don't know get mad at her simply but I think you could also use this as a moment to empathise with Sakura as a person. Her relationship with Sasuke shows her overall lack of self-respect and her overall lack of self-worth. And I think to understand how this occurs, it's very important for us to talk briefly about Sakura as a child. As a child, we've seen that Sakura's always had self-esteem issues. And it's something that might seem kind of superficial or unimportant now, but I think it's really important to remember how trauma as a child carries on into us as adults and Sakura has always had deep-rooted weakness and as a result of this she's naturally inclined to second-guess herself. I think that's where this lack of self-worth comes from and it can explain a lot of the behaviours that we see from her, especially those within the Sasuke retrieval arc. Here we see Sakura question her loyalty to the village over some point that she doesn't really know particularly well and she's even willing to give up her life for it, give up on the village, her family, her friends and give up on Team 7. I think why you should care about this is because it's a complete contrast to what we've already seen from Sakura at this point in the story. Just an arc or two ago, in the tuning exam, in the forest of death, we saw Sakura willing to risk her life trying to protect Naruto and Sasuke, and trying to protect Team 7. We see it as something that she values, something that she appreciates, so then her suddenly being able to just throw that all away, that gave me personally a lot of red flags. And I think this is where her weakness plays in. Sakura is someone who has such a low self-respect for herself, she's very easily able to just throw away everything that she's built and cares for. And again, this is for someone who's never showed her that same appreciation backwards. And I don't think that makes her a bad character. I think it makes her a good character in my book. A weak one, but an interesting one. If we fast forwards a couple of years in story time, we'll now reach a very infamous moment within the Five Kage Summit where Sakura attempts to kill Sasuke. But I want to argue that this moment is great because it shows great character progression for Sakura. And in particular, this character development is done through her being weak and again, her feelings of being useless. I'd like to point out the fact that Sakura trying to kill Sasuke, that's not an ego-driven action. She's not doing it because she thinks she's the only one that can save Sasuke, but rather she's doing it for atonement, for what she's done to Naruto before and for personal culpability for like allowing him to leave in the first place. Sakura's entire motivation in this situation 
all comes from her being weak and feeling like she was unable to do something within the Sasuke retrieval arc earlier. And now she's attempting to rectify it. It's an emotionally charged action, but I do think it shows growth. Like, instead of sitting down now on the sidelines, Sakura takes things into her own hands and she takes steps to change the situation that she finds herself in. But unfortunately, she fails. Although Sakura's grown somewhat, she still has a lot more growing to do. And one thing that I really hate and grinds my gears a little bit is a lot of the discourse around this moment. It's very one-sided with people just bashing on Sakura about like how stupid she is for thinking that she could do anything in this situation. But I think this moment here shows just how interesting a character that she can be. I think you can easily have a very in-depth and nuanced discussion about like her motivations for her actions. How much was she in the right? How much was she in the wrong? But anyways, Sakura still has further room to grow. And I think this can best be seen in her relationship with Naruto. So earlier I said Sasuke was the object of Sakura's unrequited love. Well, Sakura is the object of Naruto's unrequited love. And in this way, they sort of mirror each other a little bit. The same way that she finds Naruto really annoying for always hovering around her is the same way that Sasuke finds her annoying for doing just the same thing. And I think this should honestly be an area for them to both bond on, but it's not. And in the end, she finds him annoying. For her, Naruto is the goofy kid that she's been forced into a group with. She doesn't really enjoy spending time with him, and she doesn't particularly take him seriously, at least at first. But Naruto will eventually become one of her dearest friends and one of her most dependable ones. And it's in this relationship, and in particular, the growth in their relationship, that I think we see the best of Sakura. At the start of the story, when she meets Naruto, she mocks his dream. She mocks Naruto as a whole, and she has no real good reason for doing this. But what I do want to say is, she is not the only one. Pretty much all the other kids within the Konoha 11 all do the same thing. So personally, I'm not going to hold it against her. And more importantly than that, I think Sakura is one of the first people to really come to believe in him. For example, she sticks up for him within the tuning exams. But the most important part of their relationship, and something that's often misrepresented by the community, is again in the Sasuke retrieval arc. Sakura is confronted with her weakness and her inability to bring back the person that she loved and now she's forced to depend on Naruto, the person that she's previously mocked and made fun of to help her achieve something that she can't do. And as a result of this dependency on Naruto, she then starts to develop these feelings of guilt, which rightly she should feel, and she hates herself and resents herself for it. But if this was left here, like... Maybe I could sympathise a little bit more with the hate, but it's not. Sakura works on herself to address her lack of self-worth and her perceived weakness. We don't see this at all on screen, but we do start to see the efforts of this change within the Five Kage Summit. Here, she attempts to make up for what she did within the Sasuke retrieval arc. She wrongly assumes that the reason that Naruto is so passionate about saving Sasuke is because of her words and what she told. Sakura believes that she abused Naruto's feelings for her, for her own personal gain, and that's why Naruto continues to beat himself up over this. This is a misunderstanding on her part, and what comes of it is painful to watch, to say the least. If you can ignore the cringe you feel when you see this, it's not a bad character moment, and again shows that growth from sitting on the sidelines to now trying to solve issues herself. Whether she fails or not, shouldn't matter. It's the fact that she tries to change that should. I really believe her overall character arc and her relationship with weakness are mostly well tied up within the fourth great ninja war. Sakura saves Naruto's life and professes that she wants to help him with his dream. He shouldn't die now as they're so close to achieving this dream. A dream that at the start of the story, Sakura mocked. This shows a complete 180 on Sakura's perception of Naruto but it also shows that growth within her character. In the Sasuke retrieval arc, she's willing to admit to her own faults and weaknesses. In the Five Kage Summit, she starts to take an initiative to like fix them herself. And now finally, in the Fourth Great Ninja War, she tries to fix it in a way that's within her own ability and that she actually can do. Over the course of the last two years, Sakura is trained as a medical ninja. So what can she do to help her dying friend here? She can heal him. And I don't want the importance of this moment to be understated, because honestly, without it, Naruto dies. But the only reason that this moment can even be impactful is because Sakura starts off weak at the start of the story, and because she has so many moments where she is useless throughout the story. In conclusion, love Sakura.